Okay, in this video clip, we want to trace Einstein's path to the so-called miracle year. Sometimes you'll see this in, in Latin, the Annus Mirabilis. It comes originally from uh, 1600s, actually. Isaac Newton himself, in the, you know, about 1666, 1667, he was in London uh, at Cambridge, and there's an outbreak of the plague. And so he retreated to his family's farm in the countryside to get away from that. During his time there, he not only really laid the foundations for his, his theory of gravity, he also came up with uh, the calculus. And therefore, because of, of uh, those astounding results of this really unknown 20, uh, person in, the, in his 20s, 20-year-old, 20 but a little older than that, uh, is called the miracle year, Annus Mirabilis, at least, to to uh, science types. And then Einstein himself, 1905, so you know, approximately 220, 230 years later, has his own miracle year. So we want to figure out how does he get to that miracle year and say a few words about the miracle year itself, why it was seemingly so, so miraculous. So here's a, a rough outline of, of where we're going, just some of the highlights here. We won't go into uh, all the details because if, uh, if you want, you, of course, can, can get those in the, the profile of the young Einstein, or maybe you've already read some of that. So this will just uh, give you a pathway through that, reminder of some of those, those things. Youth in Munich. He was born in 1879, as we said in the previous video clip. Uh, his family moved to Munich when he was, he was very young. As I mentioned in the other video clip, his father and uncle started a, uh, essentially an electrical business, electrical technology business in terms of developing uh, especially electric lighting for various cities, townships in, in the Munich region. Uh, he went to school in the, the Munich school system. And one thing to, to know about the German school system at the time, very rigid, very hierarchical, and had a strong sort of militaristic Prussian slant to it. And Einstein rebelled against that very, very strongly. And uh, throughout his life, he had that sort of anti-authoritarian streak in him, and it just it did not fit well with him. So much so that by the time he was uh, 16, 17, he renounced his German citizenship, and his uh, father let him do that. And for several years then, he actually was, with, I w he was stateless. He wasn't a citizen of any place. He wanted to become a Swiss citizen, but that took several years in terms of the paperwork and fees involved and so on and so forth. So uh, he eventually became a, a Swiss citizen, and then later in his life became a German citizen, uh, again, uh, when he became famous and they wanted to claim him again, as it, as it were. Uh, mentioned last time also that he went to the, the Swiss Federal Polytechnic in Zurich, Switzerland. He actually did not get in on his first try. He, he applied sort of a year early to, to get, essentially get away from the Munich school system and wasn't successful the first time. He, he did well in the science and math aspects of the entrance exam but not, I think, French in particular was one of his weak areas. And so uh, the professor there, uh, physics professor, liked what he saw in Einstein, but said, you know, go away for a year and come back and then try again. And so that's essentially what Einstein did, although actually the professor said, I'll even tutor you for a year if you want. But uh, his family chose a different school to go to for a year, a nearby school in, uh, close to Zurich. That professor was here, Professor Weber, who was the, the primary physics professor. There were actually two physics professors at the Swiss Federal Polytechnic, but he was uh, the one that interacted with Einstein the most. Einstein enjoyed his lectures, at least early on, but later on in the course of study, felt that Weber was behind the times, especially in terms of his knowledge and teaching of electromagnetic theory, Maxwell's equations, and, and things like that. Einstein's sort of uh, impertinent uh, attitude, impudent attitude, even uh, touch of arrogance at times came through because he at times would address uh, Professor Weber not as the proper Herr Professor Weber. Uh, German educational system was very hierarchical, as was German culture and society uh, in many places. And instead, he'd just say Herr Weber, which really bordered on an insult. It was not the type of thing you'd be uh, addressing your, your professors. As. And so, in fact, Weber at one point said, you know, Einstein, you're, you're a very, uh, very smart person, but you can't, no one can teach you anything. 
that type of thing. And so Einstein certainly had that, that touch of arrogance about him in his, in his youth, and it got him into trouble at times. In fact, a little later on here, we'll see how it got him into trouble. Also, while uh, at the Swiss Federal Polytechnic, he met Maleva Marich, put the last name in here too, who was uh, a Serb, and uh, came to Switzerland for its universities. Actually, many uh, women students from throughout Europe came to Switzerland because in their, their homelands, they weren't allowed to go to university. And so you saw some, many of them in, in Swiss universities. It was unusual, though, for somebody, for a woman to be studying uh, physics, science, and math like Maleva was. She originally was going to uh, study medicine and then switched to physics, and that's therefore how she and Albert uh, met. Um, they were essentially studying to be high school physics teachers. That, that was the whole idea of the Federal Polytechnic. They weren't being trained to be future professors or anything like that. But the idea was that, as we saw last time with the burgeoning electrotechnological industry, they needed trained workers. How do you get those? Well, you teach them in high schools and similar schools like that, technical schools. And therefore, there was a need for, for teachers. And so both Maleva and uh, Albert Einstein himself were training essentially to be those types of, of teachers. He graduated in 1900. His grades were okay, but, but not great. They sort of tailed off his, his last two years for whatever reason, maybe just because he got tired of going to lecture. In fact, we know he got tired of going to lecture. He, he uh, relied on some friend's notes in many cases to pass his exams. In, in his mid-year exams or mid-course exams, two years in, he did did very well. Again, his graduation exams, he passed, but uh, did not you know, do as well as he'd done before. Maleva actually did not pass, which was obviously a big disappointment uh, to her and to him to some extent. So the graduation in, in 1900, and then the idea, of course, got to get a job. Uh, in particular, he was hoping to get a job so he could marry Maleva, which caused a lot of tensions. I have career anxieties here. There are also a lot of family anxieties. His family did not care for uh, Maleva for, for a number of reasons. She was um, Serbian, for one. Uh, uh, secondly, she was, she was very short, not conventionally attractive, you know, five feet, maybe less than five feet. She had a congenital defect in her hip, so um, she walked with a limp. So therefore, the question of her, her soundness as a wife came into play. His mother had a, another favorite among his earlier girlfriends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's a lot of family tension uh, at this time, and, and of course, Einstein's own um, impertinent tendencies came into play as well. As far as his uh, career anxieties here, what he was really wanting to do was get a position as a physics assistant, perhaps with uh, Herr Weber, Herr Professor Weber, uh, helping him out in, in the physics labs and training of uh, future engineers and things like that, uh, or with another university. Unfortunately, probably because, or at least in part because he had sort of uh, you know, antagonized uh, Professor Weber, uh, he couldn't get a position in any place. He had the suspicion that Weber was, was sort of bad-mouthing him to his colleagues in, in various places. And even though he applied to essentially universities all over Europe, nothing came up. And in fact, there's a very poignant letter that unknown to, to Einstein, unknown to Albert, his father wrote. He wrote a letter to a professor at the University of Leipzig, it was Professor Wilhelm Ostwald, a very well-known physics professor. And, and here's what his father, Hermann, wrote to Professor Ostwald. He said, please forgive a father who is so bold as to turn to you, esteemed Herr Professor, in the interest of his son. I can assure you that he is extraordinarily studious and diligent and clings with great love to his science. My son, therefore, feels profoundly unhappy with his present lack of position and his idea that he has gone off the tracks with his career and now is out of touch. This, this feeling gets more and more entrenched, entrenched each day. In addition, he is oppressed by the thought that he is a burden on us, people of modest means. Since, his, since it is you, highly honored Herr Professor, whom my son seems to admire and esteem more than any other scholar currently active in physics. It is to you whom I have taken the liberty of turning with the humble request to read his paper published in the Nolan für Physik and to write him, if possible, a few words of encouragement so that he might recover his joy in living, in living and working. 
If in addition you could secure him an assistance position for now or the next autumn, my gratitude would know no bounds. Uh, again, Albert did not know his, his father had sent that as far as, as far as we know. But you get some of the feeling uh, coming through there. Uh, it's also, in turn, Herman, his father, mentions being people of modest means. They actually had been fairly prosperous, but in the 1890s, their electrotechnology business uh, hit some real bumps. They lost a, a key contract that they were vying for and uh, therefore went bankrupt in 1894, uh, tried again, went bankrupt in 1896, and therefore they're you know, it really weighed on Einstein, perhaps even more than his father, who was uh, sort of more of an optimistic sort. So a lot of these things were weighing on Einstein at the time, uh, the career anxieties, the family anxieties, the, the rift with his family in terms of his relationship uh, with Maleva. No record exists of response by Professor Oswald to Hermann Einstein's letter in, on behalf of, um, of Albert. What's ironic, however, is just uh, a few years later, in fact, nine years later, this was written about 1901, nine years later, Oswald was the first person to nominate Einstein for a Nobel Prize. So uh, he may not even read the letter, who knows, he may have read it and just tossed it, but uh, within nine years, uh, Einstein was definitely on Oswald's mind. So definitely uh, career anxieties at this point in time, uh, he was looking for a position as a physics assistant, perhaps. He, he thought about tutoring, uh, you know, teaching position in high school someplace. And a friend of his came through for him. Uh, after about a year of this, a friend in need, uh, a friend named Marcel Grossman, who actually had helped him graduate because it was Marcel Grossman who actually went to lectures and took notes that Einstein could then use. Einstein spent a lot of time uh, tinkering around in the, the laboratories. He enjoyed that more. Than, uh, than many of the lectures. Um, well, Marcel Grossman's father knew the head of the Swiss Patent Office. And again, the whole context here of this revolution in electrotechnology, and uh, really, if you think about it, the last 20 or 30 years, uh, there's an analogy with, with uh, the computer industry in our time, providing a lot of opportunities. And in this case, the Patent Office need to expand. They're getting more and more patents in electro, electrical and technological fields, and so they were going to add a position. Einstein wasn't quite perfectly qualified for it because the, the best training would be, say, a mechanical engineer, but his, his physics training uh, allowed him to qualify, and he certainly, know, uh, certainly knew electricity and magnetism very well, that part of it, and they felt they could, could train him. So essentially, that opportunity opened up, although uh, it took a little while before he actually got, got the position there. So that was about 1901. Uh, in celebration of this, Einstein said Einstein at that time was actually in Milan, Italy. His, his father had moved the business from Munich to Milan because investors in business thought that uh, the Milan area would be a, a, a better, better area for um, developing a new business. They were selling uh, generators and things like that by that time. Uh, so he invited Maleva, hey, let's go for a nice weekend together to, to celebrate. They, they met in northern Italy at Lake Como. Uh, Maleva was, was uh, still in Switzerland at the time. She was studying for another year to try to, to graduate. Uh, they met there, you know, had the great romantic weekend. They talked about you know, going on a boat up Lake Como and over the Splugen Pass on the sleigh with snowdrifts uh, you know, on either side of them and so on and so forth. So a lot of lasting memories that Maleva wrote about to a friend uh, a few months after that. Another lasting memory came along because Maleva discovered she was, was pregnant. And as you might imagine, that added even more to the anxiety and turmoil that, that Albert and Maleva are feeling at this point. And, and so there's a lot of zigzagging at this point in terms of what Einstein felt he should do. Uh, sometimes he would say, He'd write to Maleva and say, I will look for a position immediately, no matter how humble it might be. And so he actually considered going into the insurance industry. He, looked, he applied for a position teaching uh, just physics in high school. He applied for another position teaching essentially uh, mechanics and uh, machines and so on and so forth. So he was just trying to find anything because even though we mentioned his friend, Marcel Grossman, had, had an in in the patent office, 
that position hadn't actually been advertised yet. There was a long delay here. And finally, though, uh, all the zigzagging ended because he, the patent office position did open up. The head of the patent office actually wrote personally to, to Einstein and said, please apply for this position. And finally, uh, it came through, and that would be in about 1902. Uh, so there's about a two-year period from when he graduated to 1902 with turmoil, a lot of anxiety in his, his personal life and his professional life. He was able to, to continue to do some physics. And in fact, also in 1902, uh, when he was then at the patent office in, in Bern, Bern, Switzerland, a couple of his friends, and he... Uh, put together what they called, sort of grandiose terms, the Olympia Academy. Essentially, they got together and they read books together, a lot of works in physics, but also philosophy, literature, and they would read and discuss these books intently and intensely for uh, hours at a time and also play some practical jokes on each other and, and things like that. So he certainly was still doing some physics. He'd actually been able to publish a few papers uh, along the way, but he essentially was out of academics and just... Uh, Anybody looking at him at that point would say, uh, you know, it's nice he has that, that secure position in the civil service in the patent office and maybe can keep doing a little physics on the side, as it were, and, and discuss it with his friends in this informal Olympia Academy they have. Uh, mentioned the, the pregnancy back here. A uh, daughter, Liesel, Liesel was was born. We don't know actually the, the uh, formal name given to her. And actually, we don't know what happened to her. Um, uh, there have been, when, once this did not come to light until about the 1980s or so, so fairly recently. It was not known during Einstein's uh, lifetime itself. And some, there's some evidence that she might have died at a fairly early age, maybe about two years, uh, two years old, of scarlet fever. Uh, but there's no definitive evidence exactly what happened to her. Some people think maybe, uh, again, she was adopted by friends of, of Maleva's family. Whatever, what we do know is that Maleva joined Albert in Bayern, Switzerland when he got the job at the patent office, and Lisa was, was not with them at that point. And clearly, just reading between the lines in some of the accounts of, of Maleva's life, it affected her profoundly uh, and had implications for, for their li later lives as, as well. Uh, so finally, then, we come to the miracle year. Miracle year of 1905, again, you'd not look at Einstein's life here. Certainly, he was a, a good physics student. Look at his career so far, and you know, this would be totally unexpected that this would happen. He had been able to publish some, some, a few physics papers in, in German journals, but nothing extraordinary. So let's just take a look at the miracle year itself here and talk about, briefly, the five papers that he published in the miracle year.